tanning removal experiment number five is here with the heat overlay press method from comic book stain removal and whitening from Captain Mike, along with what happened with the chloramine tea. Coming up next, stick around, let's have some fun. And welcome back. Today we're going to do experiment number five with the heat overlay press from the comic book stain removal and whitening book by Captain Mike. For this experiment, we're going to work with the top portion of the inside back cover of Adventure Comics number 383, a Silver Age book from 1969 DC Comics. Like I said previously, we're going to break this up into four parts. We're going to do distilled water, 1.5% hydrogen peroxide, 1.5% hydrogen peroxide two times, and 3% hydrogen peroxide. Later on, we're going to work on these four down here with the bled or blue LED technique. That'll be the next video. And before we get to our initial readings on these four pieces of paper and then move into the process and then, of course, the after images and see how we did, just a quick note about the chloramine T. So what is up with the chloramine T? What happened with the results we got in the last video? Well, apparently, chloramine T is not to be used with distilled water. Now, why that is remains something of a mystery, but Jerry the Jitterbug has been investigating this with me on the side and found a post, this post right here, that says quite specifically, don't use it with distilled water. Now, it could be that there are some minerals in the water that need to be there, that aren't there in distilled water, or maybe there's some other reason regarding pH levels or who knows. But this has just actually created another problem or another question on what's the deal with chloramine tea in distilled water. So for the next experiment that I do with chloramine tea, I think we'll mix up, on the one hand, we'll try it with distilled water, and then we'll do it with tap water on the other. Even though I don't love the water here in Vegas, I did some experiments with the water and found that it's really no different than the filtered water here, though it is markedly different from the distilled water. But, you know, that's neither here nor there for now. Just know that there is a caveat to not use chloramine tea with distilled water. We did in our last experiment, and that might explain why the ink was completely stripped from the book. Now back to the hop technique or heat overlay press. Now, in the book, Comic Book Stain Removal and Whitening, by Michael Frederick Sorensen, a.k.a. Captain Mike, and his team, just note that each age of book has its own specific formula for applying the heat overlay press, which, as it notes, uses a press and heat from the press to cause a reaction between the intermediary piece of paper that will have either distilled water on it or hydrogen peroxide, and to transfer it over, and we basically do an overlay. We put it on top of the page. Now, normally, like I said, these pages are connected to the book. The cover is connected. You don't remove it. But in our experiment here, we're just removing it just for ease and because it gave us an opportunity to compare other methods by using the same book. So without further ado, let's quickly get into the readings on all of these. I'll put them all up at once so that we can move this along quicker. And we're just going to line up our locations and we're just going to do stills from now on. Do the O, and then in this one, we will look at the candles. And over here, we'll look inside the little catalog box. Now here we are setting up our hop. We're going to do all four pieces at once. 
Now this isn't typically how you do it. Usually you do the entire cover while it's attached to the book. So we're doing something modified. It's a little different, but I will put some links in the description for some of the more official ways on how to conduct this. Now this technique can be done multiple times on each piece of paper. The only one we're going to do that with, however, is this one down here, the 1.5% hydrogen peroxide two times, because I want to compare that to the 3% over here. Is it better to do two at 1.5 or one at three? And just again, a reminder that we're going to be following the heat overlay press formula for the silver age here on page 94. They do differ between the ages slightly, so you need to really pay attention to those guidelines in the stain removal book. And just as a quick note before I do the overlays, I did trim the inside of the cover here that was curling to make sure that the overlay gets on okay. And here's our distilled water. Is this the recommended way to do it? Probably not, but I'm just trying to even it out quickly. And it curls, so you need to, a couple different ways you can do that, but let's see. As you can see, it just evens out very nicely when it gets wet, and then we just get rid of some of the excess into the towel and also even it out a little bit more. So that's the 1.5, and then our 3%er, which is in the black one. So there is a risk occasionally of oversaturating paper, which spreading it out helps, letting it dry in the towel helps, time helps. So you basically just need to figure out a way to lock that in. And we'll do our applications. We have our distilled water up here. We have our 1.5% over here. Another 1.5 down here. And our 3%. And now before we end up covering this to go into the heat press, we just make sure it's attached, get rid of any bubbles, a couple different ways you can do this. Credit cards are great. Okay, and then we're going to cover that up and get that in the press in a few minutes. And we got our little sandwich there. Tighten it up. We can go super tight on this because it's flat pieces of paper. And uh, let's flip her on. After the uh, the heat was applied, and then the rest period for everything to cool down. Notice that sticky sound does tend to stick. All right, so the first one that wants to come out is the 1.5% uh, over there. This was the distilled water. Now, oftentimes you will look at the paper to see if anything transferred over. You can actually see with the distilled water, a lot came up. This one, yeah, you can see some discoloration coming up there. And we have our 3%er down here. Brief glance that the, uh, the distilled water, at least on this, didn't do too much the first round. We're gonna have to take a closer look with our, our sensor, but we do need to run the 1.5 a second time and compare it to the 3%, so we're gonna do that before we get into any other results. Now, when you do the technique multiple times, you do reset all the stacking layers. So all these pages that are in here, these papers, which we have a backing board, we have a 100 pound, and then we have a 20 pound piece of paper, uh, these are replaced because they basically absorb moisture. So you need to replace them. Otherwise, you start getting things like ripples and all kinds of nasty things. You don't want to just, just replace the stuff. And we have our trusty 1.5% mixture of basically 3% hydrogen peroxide. And you cut it with equal amount of distilled water. I feel confident we can just do a direct transfer here. And uh, let's get our trusty gift card. Yeah, if you're wondering what to do with your gift cards afterwards, 
just use them for this. And uh, we get our trusty stack here. And we're just going to bring that over to the Tussie heating press. And we'll do a second round on this one. And here is our second round of hop using 1.5% hydrogen peroxide. Just going to peel these back. There we go. Always a good sound. Peeling it off. All right, now this will sometimes happen to your cover, just in general. So if it was an actual book that we were concerned with, super slow. And there we go. The distilled water and the 1.5% one time was, you know, I mean, once versus twice, right? This was once, this is twice. Now the real curiosity is looking at 1.5% twice versus 3% once. And uh, we'll do a much closer look, but my eye tells me that 1.5% twice looks better to the eye than 3% once. And doing our weights, slightly less to be expected considering I trimmed it. Same. Again, slightly less, I trimmed that one. And, and that's the same too. And this one is shorter just because I trimmed it, but this dimension is 6.4, which is the same. We're looking at the same again. That one was trimmed. Looking at the same, 6.3. And along that line, 8.6 and 6.3, same dimensions. With no discernible weight or dimension change, let's look at the colors. Where it still appears to me that the results of doing hop two times with 1.5% hydrogen peroxide whitens a bit better than 3% one time. Of course, when you work on a book, there are some things to consider. If you do too many hops, you can overhydrate a book and too high a concentration of hydrogen peroxide can turn the pages brittle. Like all things in this hobby or profession, whatever it is to you, practice makes perfect, so make sure you practice on a lot of inexpensive books before you start doing this to some pricey books. And now let's take the closest look. This is, to me, the most important aspect now. Initially it was, how much tanning did we get off? Now it is, how much ink did we keep? So I'm going to get these as close to the original image as I can. And we'll get to see if there is any ink loss and how much there is, if there is. And also, I have an opportunity to see the whitening effect on a bit of a closer, closer level. And with distilled water, not much change with one treatment. And also not much change with one treatment at 1.5% hydrogen peroxide. However, at two treatments, quite a significant improvement. And at 3%, a minimal improvement, but note that there was no discernible ink loss on any of the treatments. And here we have the book stitched back together in a before and after. And that about wraps up the hop or heat overlay press experiment. I'd say the results were quite promising, but I want to hear your thoughts. How do you think hop compared to the distilled water aqueous bath or to the Amaki clean wash? And do you prefer a tanning removal method where the cover need not be removed? Or do you like to remove the cover and give it a bath or a wash? please take a moment to comment below and share your insights. Next up, we'll explore the bled or blue LED technique, also to be found in Captain Mike's book, Comic Book Stain Removal and Whitening. See you then.